plumbers videos or plumbers training videos today anyway uh, my name is Alan Hart and today I've got Paul Daly back who Captain Batflow on Twitter has also got his own channel on YouTube as well and he's going to show us about plumbing fittings backflow protection and this is quite a good video for training so if you're the if you're training to be a plumber then this is a really good video for you it shows you about backflow devices and in my opinion Paul is the expert on on this type of fitting and device so let's go over to Paul please if you can put some thumbs up and put some comments below ask some questions and hopefully we can do follow-up videos to answer some of those questions Alan take 87 right i want to talk to you about washing machine isolation valves and what i want to explain to you is one of the biggest water quality issues that we have in the uk is water tasting like tcp so that tcp where does it comes from well it comes from the hose that supplies the washing machine or the dishwasher and typically it's because the material's not being tested and approved it's basically being made on the cheap and as soon as it hits uk market and it starts getting used it starts to break down, it starts releasing a chemical, and that chemical tastes like TCP. So what do manufacturers do to help us? Well, not a right lot, because that's a washing machine isolation valve with no backflow protection built in. However, there is this one. This has got a single check built in, so we've got somewhere, but I am not a fan of single checks. Um, I do like a double check valve on washing machines and dishwashers. So what can we do? So, retrofit. Let's say we've got this already installed. And we're like, right, don't know where the stock cock is, can't turn water off, it don't work properly, so we can't put one of them in. What we can do, this is from our Technic, we just buy a single check valve, you can see that there, it screws on, put your washing machine hose back on. You don't want to use the single check version, you can buy the double check version. You could actually put two singles together, that's what you could do, so that's a good solution. Uh, here's a little tip for you these splitters, so I've got some jobs where there's a splitter and it's plastic and I'm there because the plastic has gone brittle and it's flooding. So if you come across them or you're installing and you see the plastic version of this, take it out and put in the brass version. Another solution that we can use is this, it's a 15mm plain end with a 3 quarter outlet and what we do is we buy a filling loop and we, we've basically got a double check valve with isolation, we put that in the end and that gives us isolation, backflow protection and the spigot to go onto the washing machine or dishwasher. That's that Alan, so that is a tip for TCP tasting water and what the plumber or the homeowner can do to resolve the issue. Thank you very much for that Paul and we're going to go back to Paul um, in a few minutes and Paul's going to talk to us about backflow uh, prevention and backflow devices and talk to us about the springs and all things like this so really really important for training for plumbers so if you if you're training if you're a plumber and you're training and it's really important uh, one thing i will say is what i try and do on this channel is bring people in who are the experts and show them rather than me trying to pretend that i'm the expert on all these different things you know i could phone people up and i could message them and i could ask them certain things but i would rather if possible bring the experts on and give the correct training and help to the people to you guys that are watching um so please if you can if you haven't done already put a thumbs up and ask a question and um, let's go back to paul Alan and your followers, I've got some backflow devices here that I'm going to show you. So all backflow devices, they have a family name. So this is a single check valve. It's got two little test parts on it. So it's a verifiable single check valve. You can see the back of the check there. And you, well, you may not be able to see the check, actually, the face of the check in there. So um, this is known as an, an EA device, a verifiable single check valve. This is a non-verifiable single check valve known as an EB device, so non-verifiable. Uh, I have also got another one, uh, this is a different version, but it's a single check valve and it's non-verifiable, that's an EB device. This is a single check valve built into a washing machine isolation valve, uh, again non-verifiable, an EB device. 
Now, if we go on to double checks, uh, this is a double check valve um, used on retrofit for connecting onto washing machine uh, isolation valves as a good example there that has got a double check valve and assembly in it I don't have any verifiable ones so this is known as an ED device an ED device um, non verifiable double check valve there's a few other examples here on these are female female that's a, a three quarter that's an half inch uh, this is a 28 mil compression double check valve type ED device there is double check valves built into some hose union boot taps now these are actually called if it's got a if it's got a double check valve built into it it's called an HUK1 now this is a valve that I actually removed from a job because on inspection I'd asked how long it had been in and and if it's more than five years then I want them changing and the guy said oh yeah it's definitely more than five years what happens when we change it when you look inside there is no double check valve now there's a little drain point there and that is to drain off and winterize the valve between the two checks but some that's gone on um, in that last five years or more and somebody has removed the checks so they were using a hose thinking that they were protected and there wasn't uh, right so let me show you what a check valve looks like inside so you've got the face of the check there's a little bit of black rubber that you might see that is the seat where the face sits on there um, typically with these um, if you get any if you're in a hard water area or if you get any debris up the line it can stick and cause these to partially remain open now I have got a video Alan which I might just switch to that shows you in fact let's do that let's switch to the video where I have got a three inch um, double check valve that's stuck open Let's go to that. But number two check valve. If we have a look inside it now. You can see there's a contaminant and it's broke off and it's wedged the valve open. Now what's happened is that valve has then seized in the open position. And we've been able to identify now the source of the low water pressure. We actually thought it was the pressure reducing valve that, that was fitted after these checks. But when we started to take, take it all apart, um, we were looking down on the checks and we're like some something's not quite right here so let's go a little bit further with this and and that's what we found there we go so that was really really interesting that video once the valve is in situ how do you know that the valve is working correctly well the answer is you do and that's why at five years I request that they get them changed so the spring should push back um, the springs can go weak, it can get stuck open, and therefore you've not got any backflow protection. Where else do we find check valves? So this is a TMV, this has got a single check valve in it. And what we have is a strainer, that strainer protects the check, the check from debris. The check's situated there. There's one on the hot and there's one on the cold, and it's because we've got a cross connection between hot and cold, and it's rated at a fluid category 2. Now, what if we've got a fluid category 3? Um, well, we can use as double check valves, but there are also some other devices. Now, this is known as an C, uh, as an, this is known as a CA device. It's a non-verifiable backflow preventer, sometimes also known as a disconnector. So where do we find these? Well, some modern boilers have these built in, and when you turn off number two isolation valve, you get a little bit of water dribbling out the port. I'm not a fan of them and I'm not a fan because you have centrally in water high pressure and temperature pushing on the back of the check and I think a lot of the time that's why these fail. Water then passes the check, starts dribbling out, that's what goes on. But you can see these in some, uh, I don't know if it's Boilermate or if Boilermate's part of Gledel, I can't remember, but there are some where they have an integral filling loop into the system and um, they've got these inside them. You might know Alan, or one of your followers might know. They might go, I've seen that, or something similar. So that's a CA device. I've got another version here of a CA device. That's this one. This is made by Honeywell. Um, it's a CA295. So it's a fluid category 3 rated, non-verifiable backflow preventer. It's getting quite busy there on that shelf. Right, so this is from Watts. This is an RPZ valve, Alan. Now, you had one of these in your other video. 
and I said I'd do you a video on it. So this is an RPZ valve. It is a verifiable backflow preventer. It's got test ports on it. And what we do as part of our testing and commissioning is first of all, make sure that the valve is suitable for the application. Um, lots of the time, some of these valves are installed without uh, permission from the water company and they're installed for the wrong application. It's a fluid category five application. And we'll go and test and go, yep, yeah, your valve works, but it's not installed for the appropriate application and it has to get removed and a fluid category five backflow prevention device has to get fitted. So that's an RPZ valve. There's loads of different types of these. This is the Honeywell version. You can see it's got the same tundish on as the CA device, uh, very, very similar. Uh, made in Germany. I'm trying to blag a factory visit. This is a Reliance version. So this one, it were installed, but it wasn't suitable for the application. And the reason being is um, this RPZ valve um, was fitted on the hot supply and it's only rated to 30 degrees Celsius. So it wasn't suitable for the application and it got removed. What else have we got? Oh, I've skipped one, Alan. This is what I wanted to show you. So, um, shower hoses that reach um, below the spillover level of the bath or the shower tray are rated in domestic, 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 that is a big thing, domestic only, are rated at a fluid category three. This screws onto the outlet and then you attach a shower hose onto the bottom. It's a double check valve and it gives you fluid category three backflow protection and it gives you compliance. Need to keep that one tidy that one because that's uh, it'll be getting installed right what were i going to show you oh comparison so we've got that that is a three-quarter check this only <laughs> i can get it in that is a six inch <laughs> now that that is, is from ah, it wears a ton this wears an absolute ton that is from a six inch RPZ valve. That's what that's from. And it had failed, but it failed on the differential pressure across this spring. So although this spring's got quite a lot of tension on it, it was less than what the manufacturer and what RAS um, require. So therefore it got replaced. Now, what you don't start doing is taking the assemblies apart. So you would just order a new check. So it comes complete with a new seal there. And what you can't see is, the water passes through here there is a rubber that's inside there um, what I might do Alan is I might bring you this and let you have a go on it, it it's absolute a nightmare trying to get it open uh, by hand and I'm convinced when I do it I'm gonna trap my fingers I think I'll I think that's it for backflow devices that have checks built into them but there are some other backflow devices that are suitable for fluid category 5 applications and this is known as a DC device. You can see there, that's where the water goes in and the hole is absolutely tiny. So the water goes in there, it passes directly through the middle, but it's actually passing through, I'm not sure if you can see it, it's passing through an air gap. Now, this is um, painted gray, because typically um, these go onto lab taps and they go onto lab taps because they don't come with a DC device. And what happens is you get the, um, operator attaching a hose the hose drops below the spillover level of the sink or they put it into a chemical and that's when we've got a cross connection and it's a fluid category five so we put on a dc device that's a retrofit you can buy some uh, some lab taps with dc devices built in but this is another version of a dc device this is from nabic um, you can see it's quite narrow through the center and then I'm hoping that you can see the air gap that the water jumps through. So if there was any back siphonage, because we've got an air brake there, it would prevent any siphonage of water um, going back up the line and into the potable supply that we all drink. So that would give you fluid category five protection. So that is a DC device. I think I'll, I think that that is, that is it for, for this video, it's 10, 10 minutes long. Um, what I will do is I will show you on my next video some of these devices installed. That's what I will do. I'll show you uh, them actually installed. All right, take care everybody, thank you.
Thank you very much for that, Paul. I'm sure you will agree that that video was amazing, full of lots of um, loads of information in there to hopefully help you in your training. Because obviously when you go to college, and I know what it's like, obviously it's a long time since I were in college, um, but I know what it's like in college, you, you get all this information, sometimes you just get, you see things in books and you don't really, you don't really under, understand all of it. Um, and it's good to see things like this. Um, Paul's gonna come back and Paul's gonna do some more videos for us. So he's gonna do some in situ and then hopefully this will help you build your knowledge. If you've got any questions, please put them below because then what we can do, hopefully Paul can tailor some of the videos to your questions. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching. <laughs> I don't really know what else to say. Just an uh, absolute amazing, amazing video. Um, oh yeah, if you wanted to click on the join button, remember the join button is all the money that I receive from the join button will be donated to charity. So it will get donated to candle lighters. And also I will match your donation up to a total cap of £1,000. And what, what that join button is, you pay £2.99 per month and you can get fancy things like you can have emojis and things like this. Also, we have a, a little bit of a members section as well. And sometimes I'll, I'll put things in that members section and, and you can have some feedback and maybe give some feedback on what videos you want and things like that. Um, so yeah, if you want to join that, then that'd be great. Um, yeah, thanks. Thanks for watching.